Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in Dentistry and more. Today's topic is bone formation or ossification. So we know the bone formation happens uh, at the very early uh, years of life. So bone formation happens in two ways basically. One is intracartilaginous way that is endochondral and the second one is intramembranous way. So the pattern of ossification is different in these two methods. So let's learn about bone formation. So we'll start with the endochondral bone formation, which is also known as intracartilaginous one. So the basic difference between these two is in intracartilaginous one, there will be a template, there will be a cartilage template or cartilaginous model which serves as a foundation for the future bonds okay so we know Meckel's cartilage we are learned Meckel's cartilage in our embryology Meckel's cartilage uh, in pharyngeal pouches pharyngeal arches where this Meckel cartilage act as a template for many bonds such as uh, malleus ingus so this was nothing but endochondral bone formation that is there will be a template for the future bone formation that is a basic difference this intramembranous uh, there is no uh, such template or there is no such uh, foundation where the future bone develops it is only for endochondral bone formation so we will start the steps of endochondral bone formation so it starts with mesenchymal cells they become condensed at the site of bone formation so imagine this as a area where the future bone develops so in that area mesenchymal cells become condensed and some mesenchymal cells differentiate into chondroblast okay so some of the mesenchymal cells become chondroblast and it lay down the hyaline cartilage so this cartilage is surrounded by a membrane called perichondrium perichondrium is a membrane which surrounds the cartilage so this perichondrium is very highly vascular and which contain the osteogenic cells from which the future bone develops and then the intercellular substance surrounding this cartilage so this is a cartilage so intercellular substance surrounding this cartilage becomes calcified due to the influence of enzyme that is alkaline phosphatase which is secreted by this cartilage cells so these are the cartilage cells which secretes alkaline phosphatase okay so alkaline phosphatase causing the calcification of intercellular substances that is the blue dots so the nutrition to this cartilage cells is cut off leading to their death because all the areas surrounding this cartilage is calcified so the nutritional supply to this cartilage cells is gone then there will be death of these cells which results in formation of empty spaces okay empty spaces which is known as primary areoli so this is the process so perichondrium then the chondroblast then chondroblast uh, secretes alkaline phosphatase there will be intercellular calcification then the nutritional supply will be cut off and this control sites or control blast area will become dead and it will be an empty space which is known as primary areola all other primary areola spaces then the blood vessels and osteogenic cells from the perichondrium invade the calcified cartilaginous matrix that is now reduced to bars or walls due to the eating away of the calcified matrices so then the calcified matrices so all these intercalcified matrices what happens these matrices now invaded by the perichondrium osteogenic cells okay so this leaves a large empty spaces between the walls called as secondary areola so all these intercellular substances are invaded and it becomes like this that is walls of empty spaces okay this is known as secondary areola and then what happens then 
the osteogenic cells from the perichondrium becomes osteoblast okay so this is a osteoblast and they arrange along the surface of these bars of calcified matrices okay so this portion is enlarged here okay so this is lined by osteoblast okay so after that what happens after that there will be osteoid formation okay so then this osteoblast will lay down osteoid that is the immature bone okay which later becomes calcified and becomes lamella of bone okay this is the future bone that is a calcified bone at the same time the next layer of osteoid is formed by the help of this osteoblast and it goes on okay this is how endochondral bone formation happens chondroblast then the perichondrium the primary areolae secondary areolae then the osteoblast then the osteoid formation then the lamella bone and the new osteoid formation and it goes on okay so primary areolae is becoming secondary areolae by the dissolution of intercellular calcified structure and it becomes like this and each one is surrounded by osteoblast now let's move on to the intramembranous one so intramembranous one contradicting to the endochondral formation there is no formation of cartilaginous model instead the bone is laid down directly in the fibrous membrane so this is a fibrous membrane where the bone is laid down directly in the fibrous membrane so it starts with again uh, the mesenchyme so there will be mesenchyme uh, cells which will be aggregated at the site of bone formation that is the first step then what happens then some mesenchymal cells lay down the bundles of collagen fibers so there will be bundles of collagen fibers after that some mesenchymal cells enlarge and acquire a basophilic cytoplasm basophilic cytoplasm and form osteoblast so some of the cells becoming osteoblast so these osteoblasts secrete gelatinous matrix called osteoid so we also seen osteoid here that is an mineralized bone so osteoid formation happens and this conversion of osteoid into bone lamellae by deposition of calcium salt there will be calcium salt deposition and it becomes the lamella bone and this osteoblast move away from the lamellae and the new layer of osteoid is secreted which also get calcified so this was the first bone okay first bone form formed then it starts again secreting osteoid this is the osteoid okay so it will be continued so the process is almost same osteoid becomes a uh, new bone and the process continues when this osteoid forms and it becomes a lamella bone the osteocytes or osteoblast it move away from it and a new layer of bone will be laid down so only difference between these two endochondral and intramembranous in endochondral we have a template here we don't have it forms directly within the membrane okay so what are the bonds actually follows this pattern so the intramembrane is one okay they are uh, cranial vault mandible clavicle all follows this intramembranous uh, bone formation or ossification so the um, endochondral or cartilaginous or are mostly the vertebras and uh, longer bones and also we have Uh, learn the Meckel's cartilage bones, that is, uh, myelosynchus and all those head and neck bones. So that's all about uh, the bone ossification or bone formation. We have endochondral and intramembranous uh, types. So that's all for now. Hope you understood the basic concept of these two types of bone ossification. I'll come up with a new topic in dentistry and more. Thank you. And lastly, guys. we have started the channel membership in dentistry and more channel so you can explore a various uh, exclusive perks for the channel members so you can explore various options by clicking on the join button adjacent to subscribe button 
so we have options of uh, personal whatsapp uh, help so you can ask any doubts uh, you will get answered through whatsapp uh, text messages or uh, voice messages and we have one more option that is uh, the pdf notes will be available but as of now we have only the public health dentistry topic the more topics will be uploaded soon and the last option is one to one interaction session you will get the personal interaction or personal classes on uh, various subjects from the faculties of respective branches so explore the join button and let us know if you want any further help from us thank you